In the last video, I showed you what a factory function is. It's a design pattern that we use in order to reduce code duplication and create objects for us efficiently. Ugh, I'm bored already. Who the f wrote this shit? You did. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh. Okay, wow. In this episode, I'm gonna show you another native pure JavaScript pattern that does the same thing, but slightly differently. And that is constructor functions. It gets the name from the constructor function you get inside classes. In object-oriented languages, every time you create an instance of a class, the constructor function is the first thing that gets executed. But since JavaScript didn't have classes for a very long time, but it needed the same sort of functionality, that's where the name comes from. So we sort of get the constructor function without the class itself. Okay, I shall explain. This is a 10-part series I'm calling 10 things JavaScript developers should know, but probably don't. This is episode four, constructor functions. Let's go. A constructor function is nothing but a function that creates objects for us. That's it. Very similar to factory functions that we talked about in the last video. If you're making lots and lots of objects with similar properties or functionality, the process can become very repetitive real quick. Say you have two objects, a me object and a you object. And both of these objects have a talk function on them that announces the name, right? You should be familiar with this already. One says, uh, I am Sina. The other one says, I am Koli. And of course, we are met already by our nasty code duplication, which we've already talked about. So we made this a little better by pulling the name out of the return statement and uh, created a layer of abstraction. The issue that we're still facing is that we are duplicating the talk function, right? right? It's like literally a copy of itself. We had to write it twice. And if you still haven't heard me say enough bad things about code duplication, watch any other video in this series and uh, yeah. Then we fixed it using a factory function like this, where we, we have this create person function where I can call the function as many times as I want. Uh, and all I need to do is pass in the name and the object will do the repetitive stuff for me and return the object back to me so I can do whatever I want with it. And remember, the name is the only thing that's different between all these different objects. The many benefits of centralizing what we call business logic explained here or there or somewhere. Another way to fix this is using something called a constructor function. But unlike factory functions, constructors don't actually return the object to you. Instead, the magical new keyword is involved and the mysterious, let's just say this keyword. Hmm. There is a bit of magic going on here, so let me show you. But before I get into some code, I want to explain the concept first. Imagine a restaurant and here's the waitress, Lisa, and here is the chef Craig. That's, that's creepy. Now these two need to communicate all day and they need to do it very efficiently. But imagine if every time Lisa wanted to talk to Craig and tell him about an order, she would have to say, hello, Craig. Hello, Lisa. How are you today? I am good. Are you ready for another order? Oh yes, Lisa, who is out there? So there's a new table of customers out there and they are very hungry and ready to eat. Excellent. Well, I have lots of food out here and I can make it for them. Okay, here's the order, Craig. The mom would like a Caesar salad and she wants the dressing to be on the side because apparently she thinks that makes a difference. The dad would like a croque madame because he had too much beer with his friends last night and the headache is just killing him. And the kids who apparently just heard a hilarious joke would both like an avocado toast gluten-free because uh, let's face it, this is Brooklyn and even kids have Instagram. Well, okay then Lisa, I will make it for them. Now imagine every time those two had to communicate with each other that they would have to repeat all these unnecessary steps with the greeting and the people and the how many and the thought process and the all the nonsense, all the unnecessary stuff that Craig clearly doesn't need to hear. So what does she do instead? She goes Caesar salad, dressing on the side, uh, croque madame and two avocado toasts, GF, gluten free. Or even better, she might say something like this, uh, number three dressing on the side and number four and, and two fifteens, GF. I don't know why Lisa sounds like she's from Queens all of a sudden. But you get the point, right? Craig will automatically know what she's talking about because they have established a pattern between the two of them. In essence, there is a blueprint of communication almost that they both follow. Give me the items and the quantity. And if there is any special request, add that to the end of the order. And I'll do the rest and I'll assume 
that there are people out there that are hungry. You don't have to repeat any of that to me. Leave the unnecessary stuff out of it. Enough with the pleasantries. Factory functions, which we already looked at, are essentially the same idea. Give me, in this case, give me the name of the person and I'll do the same. And the same idea with constructor functions, right? We wanna create a blueprint for creating objects. So we don't have to repeat all the unnecessary parts. Instead, all we have to do is specify the unique part so that JavaScript will know what we're talking about. And in this game, the name is the only variant. So let's take our talk function example from before and improve it to the browser. All right, so constructor functions uh, by convention start with a capital letter. So let's say function person, okay. Um, this rule for the capital letter, this is not really a rule, it will actually work even without it. Uh, but we're trying to make it seem like we're using classes. Uh, we want to hint at the fact that this is a constructor. In languages that do have classes, the class name has to start with, uh, typically has to start with a capital letter. Uh, but for us in JavaScript, we're pretending like it's a class, right? So I'm gonna create a, a person function and what it does is it, it sets a name uh, and actually takes a name and it sets it to uh, this.name, okay? Then what I can do is I can call it, I can say const Cena equals new. I told you the magical new keyword is involved, new person. And look at that. when I try to invoke that function with the new keyword, it says, hey, there is a thing here called name. You should, you better pass that in. And of course, I will pass my name, Sina. All right, so uh, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of new stuff here, in case you haven't uh, seen any of this. Uh, so let me unpack some of that for us. So if we, first of all, if we console log Sina, uh, we can see that this is already of type person. So this is already telling us a little bit about it, right? But we can also look inside and see there is a name, right? So this actually created uh, uh, the object for us, but it's actually, when you think about it, it's not that different from a constructor function. If we, uh, if we created an object using a constructor, uh, using a factory rather, it would actually do the exact same thing for us. The only difference is that here I have the object type, whereas uh, with a factory function, if we didn't have a constructor, it would just say object. But notice how our function isn't actually returning anything, right? So how is the assignment of const Cena really happening here, right? So when you put new in front of a, a function call, JavaScript automatically does two things for us. First, it creates a object inside the function itself and calls it this. And then it returns that object this to the statement where it was uh, invoked. You and I actually won't see any of that, but you can imagine that that's the magic behind the constructor function uh, that we just wrote here, right? Magic. So now I can use this function to create objects without the, any of the repetitive steps. I mean, let's actually make it a little more interesting and add a talk function to it. I'm gonna copy this guy, let's refresh. So if I had this.talk um, equals, let's create a function here. And what this does, it returns, uh, let's do one of these guys. Hello, I am this dot name, right? So now I can say const Cena equals new, uh, no, new person. Ah, refresh, let's do that. Let's, forgot to pass in the name. Okay, I can do const Ben equals new person. It's his name, Ben. And then I'll do another one and I'll call it Sam, right? So uh, again, the beauty of this is that none of, none of the talk function logic has to be repeated no matter how many of these objects I create. Uh, this constructor function becomes the blueprint uh, on which we can then go ahead and create as many objects as we want. In real world uh, scenarios, the logic will be a lot more complicated than these few lines. So if you don't see the real value here, right? Just imagine if that logic was 10, 20, 100 lines. A blueprint, or in the, in the case of JavaScript, a constructor function will be saving you a lot of time. And time is money. 
A real world example could be, I'm gonna borrow from the last video, is that if you're creating elements and you're attaching them to the DOM, you can create a function that creates uh, DOM elements and add very specific content to it. It could be even uh, accept the type really, maybe whatever you want. And then it can return the object back to you using the same uh, method of the this and the new together. And then you can take that object and do whatever you want with it. So let's create one. I'm gonna get rid of all this. Uh, let's create a function and we call this super element. Um, remember, constructor functions, we want to make sure they're a Pascal case. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to call it super element because why not? It will take a type. This might seem similar to you if you watch the episode three. Uh, I take the type and then content, content, okay? And then what it does is creates, uh, remember that this already gets created for us. So I can add a, a property got element to it. Document dot create element of type, right? Uh, that type is dynamic. I'm going to pass it in. We can have all sorts of logic here. What happens if you don't pass the type in and all that, but we're not trying to get that fancy today. Uh, then I can add uh, some inner text to this element and say this dot inner text equals content because that's also nope dynamic we're gonna pass that in and then i can even do something cool like add a function to it like add this dot element dot add event listener right i can do that and let's do a click and one simple thing for us to do would be to let's say console log let's console log this dot l and then after, right before I do that, I'm going to add it to the body. Uh, actually, document dot body dot add, no, append, right? Yes, append, append uh, this dot L, right? I think that's all we need. Cool. Then what I can do is I can create a const h1 equals new super element. All right, super element. Parentheses, this is my favorite thing about this whole thing, is that the browser already knows. This guy needs two things. You have to send me a type, fine, h1, and a content. Hello. 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 Uh, and that's all I have to do when I want to create this one guy. So let's see what happened. Uh, h1, actually, you can't see this because my uh, browser this is the one side of the browser, the other side you can't see, but I'm gonna, I can see it that was added to the element, take my word for it. If I click on it, boom, it was added. And all of that magic is done away from this one line, right? So all I have to do is just use my constructor function to create this element for me, which is, which is amazing. And then the other thing I can do is I can, uh, let me, uh, I want to keep this on the screen. So I'm just going to copy it I'm going to refresh. So everything goes away. Copy past the coding. Jesse Warden, I see you. Uh, so then what I can do is I can, I want to show you what it's like if I create multiple elements. So I can, of course, do const h1 and an h2 and blah, blah, blah. But instead, what if I had const, what if I had an array of, um, array of, content, let's say A, and then B, and then C, right? Let's say I have an array like that. And then what I want to do is for each member of that array, I want to create an element so I can call super element uh, for each of those, uh, those indexes. So what I can do is I can say const my elements, right? Equals the array, which is my, uh, the array I just, uh, created right above. I can do a map function here and inside the map function, uh, this will be each item. I can iterate through and I can say for each of them, return, return. Hopefully you know what array.map does, but this is nothing other than me creating uh, a new super element for each of the elements in my, uh, uh, each of the items in my array. Uh, the type, I'm just going to hard code this to paragraph. And then the second thing, which is content, 
would be the actual item, which is A, B, C, uh, and so on and so forth. So once I do this, let's see, first was type, then it was content. Cool, let's do that. And now let's take a look at my elements. It created three super elements for me. Fantastic. Uh, and they're all of type P. And then if I just go inside and really, if I really wanna see what the inner content, inner text is, this one's the B, right? But better than that, because we have, uh, for free, we were able to get the click event. Here, uh, again, you can't see it, but I'm gonna just click on these elements, C, B, A, all of that logic only written one time. And instead uh, of me having to write all of this, all of this craziness up here three times, I wrote it one time and everybody just gets the same functionality because they're all using the constructor function to be created. Right, so hopefully the power of constructor functions is now a little more clear to you. So going back to the, the essence of the communication, this function cuts through all the crap, all the stuff that you wanna do for each element. Every time you wanna make a new instance of it, all you gotta do is provide the stuff that's different, in this case would be the, the, the type and the content, which is, if you think about it, very similar to what Lisa had to do with Bob or, or whatever the f we named that guy. Uh, look at that face, still creepy, still creeps me out. But the constructor function paradigm is very similar to the communication between these two, because essentially they're cutting out everything that is going to be the same for every order. The only thing Lisa has to communicate is the differences. And again, back to our function, we don't have to repeat any of the steps that are uh, shared between all the elements, are similar between all the elements. All I gotta do when I call the constructor function is to specify the differences. All right, hopefully that made sense. The next episode is gonna be huge. I'm gonna dedicate the whole episode to the this keyword, or as I call it, the original asshole of JavaScript. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. This has been episode four of a 10 part series I'm calling 10 things JavaScript developers should know, but probably don't. Thank you for joining, and I will see you in the next one. Salute.